Walking through a graveyard yesterday, I stepped on a broken piece of a headstone with just my birthday inscribed on it. Pick included. Reddit. What's your creepiest weirdest coincidental experience? Six years ago, because of my drinking, I'd been homeless for about 8 months. I'd been at a shelter for a few weeks and one day, as I walked from the library back to the shelter for dinner, I decided I couldn't take any more. I was ready to kill myself. That prior August my mother had passed away, so on the street that evening I said to her, I can't take it anymore, mom, help me. Back at the shelter, after dinner, us bums waited for showers and bedtime. That evening the shelter had more residents than usual and many of them needed clean socks or underwear, etc. On this night, it wasn't scheduled, but the shelter opened the basement where they kept donated clothes. I didn't need anything, but I was bored, so I went downstairs. I browsed the racks and didn't find anything to my liking so I headed for the stairs. That's where I found Lemut. Lemut is a toy, a little stuffed dog, and I'd had one when I was a kid. In fact, I clearly remembered my mother and I in the store, 20 plus years ago, buying him. I was in third grade then. I asked a volunteer if he knew where the dog came from. He shook his head. This was, and still is, a men's homeless shelter. People were not dropping off stuffed animals for the junkies and drunks. I don't know where the dog came from, but I kept him. Still got him. Anyway, my life is much better, and different. Today, I'm set to graduate with a BFA next month. Life is really, really good. Thanks, mom. I love you. Around 6 or 7 years ago, a large portion of my neighborhood burned down in the fires that swept through Southern California. While helping my friend's family pick through the rubble of their home for anything that could be salvaged, I saw a speck of white paper in the midst of one of the more blackened areas. I picked it up and read it. The only text on this bit of paper, left over after the rest of the page had burned away, was from the ashes, new life is born. I worked at a library for a very long time, and in an effort to not lose my soul, I collected stuff I found in books. My favorite discovery was a hilarious postcard between two friends. I immediately thought, I'd like to meet these people. I kept it next to my computer for a few years. After a few years passes, I'm going through my papers and find a postcard from my girlfriend that I don't recognize. It takes me a few minutes to understand that I'm reading the postcard I'd put aside years earlier, between someone who was now my girlfriend and another person I'd come to know as a friend. It was probably the weirdest event in a series of events that defied probability regarding a ton of surreal linking events in our lives. A couple years back, I had a dream of my grandfather, who I was not particularly close to by any means. In my dream I saw his casket formally covered by an American flag. He served in the military. He stood next to me in a room full of mourners and held my hand. He told me not to follow him out of the doors when he left. I watched him leave. When I woke up and went downstairs to get breakfast and call my father to tell him happy birthday, my older brother informed me that my grandfather had just passed away in his sleep while I also slept. These experiences only make me wonder about the universe. When I was in 7th grade I had a serious crush on a girl. One day her mom was driving a bunch of us somewhere and everyone was talking and making jokes. I can't remember the exact conversation, but I had a moment of silence where it was my chance to make everyone laugh. I made a super lame joke that brought silence. My moment to impress was ruined. Come 10 years later, I am driving a car with the kids of family friends. In the same seat in the back sits a kid that reminds me of me, and there is a girl in the front seat he likes. The exact conversation, something about not enough of us to do something, starts progressing. I look into the rear view mirror at the kid and was thinking don't say we will multiply. Don't say we will multiply. I was going to intervene before he said it but bam he drops the same lame joke I did 10 years before. And it seriously had no context or comical value at all. I was in awe like I was psychic. A useless one apparently. I'm assuming he did not get the girl either. When my mom was pregnant with me, an old woman came up to her and told her she was pregnant and poked her in the stomach. My mom was only about 2 weeks along and she nor anyone else knew for a while. And she wasn't even trying to get pregnant. My mom was fairly thin at this time and didn't have a baby bump. My friend's mother used to foster. 
her three-year-old foster son from two three years ago told her she was pregnant. She took a test, voila. A week later they asked the boy how he knew there's a boy in your tummy was all he said. When she had her scan she found out she was having a boy. I was walking through the woods one day, and I stumbled across a graveyard from the 1800s 1900s. I was just walking through and the first one that I saw was a little boy who died on the same day that I was born. The crazy part was that he and I had the same first and middle name. When my cousin and I were babies, we're just under 2 years apart, we were sleeping in my room while our moms were wrapping Christmas presents since it was around Christmas time. They were downstairs wrapping presents when they hear on the baby monitor a woman saying to my cousin who was starting to cry, Don't worry, your mom will be here soon. My mom and aunt run upstairs and no one is there. Plus no one else on the street had a baby so there was no interference. My friend had told me that I would find out within 3 weeks that I was pregnant and it would be a boy. 3 weeks later, to the day, I found out I was pregnant. I didn't find out that I was having a boy until 3 days before I had him. And my friend called me a month and a half before I had my son to tell me that I would have him on the 20th. Sure enough after 36 hours of labor I had my son on November 20th. I always thought it was kinda creepy that she got it right. Last December, I had a bad dream earlyish in the morning that my dad had stopped taking his liver medication and that he was going to die. In the dream, I asked why he had been so careless but he said that it was just his time. When I woke up, my sister texted me that dad was in the hospital. He passed away 3 weeks later due to, of course, liver complications from not taking his medication. It was nearing Christmas and one day when I came home from school my mother asked me to guess who we got a Christmas card from. Without hesitation I said, from the people who ran the little motel on our summer trip to Michigan. She was speechless, I was right and I was speechless too. On my 12th birthday I was on the way to the bike shop to get a new bike. I was with my dad, his girlfriend and my brother. We were still about 10 minutes away from the town center, so nowhere near the bike shop. Some random, old, creepy looking guy came up to us, looked down at me and said, you buying a bike I looked at my dad, confused and kinda scared. We told him that we were on our way to buy a bike. He then started going on about how I must get a helmet and wear it all the time. We was a little freaked out but we just assumed he was a weirdo and just forgot about it. A few hours later I was riding through the park on my new bike and I fell off. I didn't fall very hard and landed on grass so it was cool. As I went to get up brush myself off, I looked up and he was just standing there, looking disappointed and shaking his head. He shook his index finger at me and said, I told you to wear a helmet. At this point I just crapped myself and rode as fast as I could home. What is even weirder though is the fact that I have moved about 40-50 miles away since then and I still see him every once in a while. I don't believe in guardian angels but it just creeps me out. I worked with a girl Jay over the summer who told me once that every time someone she knew became pregnant, someone else she knew, however vaguely, would die. She also had almost prophetic dreams and knew when someone was pregnant before they ever told her. Well one day, another co-worker comes in and says she doesn't feel well and Jay says you're pregnant and then gets really upset because that meant someone would likely pass away soon. A week later, when coming in from her lunch break Jay said to me in a really funny way, I'm so sorry. Few minutes after, I get a call saying that my grandfather was minutes from passing away, and to this day I'm still unsure of whether or not this was all some weird coincidence, or if Jay knew all along. When we were kids a group of us used to hang around near a small stream. One night we were there I got a really bad feeling, and told my friends I was going home. I begged them to come with me, but only one did. I practically legged it up the hill from the stream. I was so afraid. The next day I found out the girls that stayed got beaten by a girl gang less than 15 minutes after I and our friend had left. Still freaks me how I knew to get out of there. My grandmother was in hospice back when I was still in high school. My aunt's family and my mom and all my siblings went to see her, as is common. She was pretty drugged with all kinds of morphine and wasn't making much sense. Didn't know who we were. Gibberish really. But she would keep mentioning. There was people near the ceiling and stuff. My aunt and mom kept trying to talk to her. Asking if she was comfortable etc. Then all of a sudden. 
She turns her head and stares at me. In the clearest voice it heard from her all day. She says. Oh my. There's a little one next to you. And smiles. Still freaks me out. My brother's name is Kelly. A few times. Strangers have stopped near him and flatly say. Kelly. Then keep walking. A waiter did it once. He stood right behind his chair with a full plate of dirty dishes. Stopping to pronounce Kelly. Then moving along. It happened a lot when we were on our way to work or school. In high school there was a kid who had the same middle and last name as me, the same birthday, and our parents had the same names. Not even kidding. It blew my mind. Well, for me it would be when I moved from Massachusetts to where I am now. There were these two kids that lived in my now hometown, a brother and a sister. The brother and sister were the same ages as my brother and I, respectively. The boy and my brother's names both started with T, and the girl and my names both started with A. The boy was more of an athletic type, while the girl was more into art. Also like my brother and I, I was a Joel scout in my town in MA before, and I joined one of the troops when I got here, and it was the troop that the girl had been in. Three days before we moved in, the two kids were hit by a drunk driver and killed. It was pretty dang eerie. Till towns maintain homeostasis. After my great aunt Lynn passed away, my other great aunt Cynthia was walking home in the rain. Obviously she was pretty sad. She said, Lynn, show me some proof that you're still here. My aunt Lynn collected these rare things called Indian medicine bags. Somehow, Cynthia found one on the ground in the rain. Inside there were six paper dolls, four girls and two guys. One of the girls was wearing pants. The coincidence? In her family, there are four sisters and two brothers. Aunt Lynn always wore pants. I was around 10 years old and my mom took my siblings and I to an Elvis impersonator show. After the show, he was signing scarves and things. He was kind of a local celebrity in my medium sized Florida city the person in front of me had the same uncommon name as me and was about my age. I said that was my name, as well. We thought it was cool but never saw each other again. A few years later, I'm camping with my family in New Hampshire. The campground has a small playground and I'm on the swings. I hear someone call my name, turn and see this same person was there, telling their family they were going to the playground. When I was 8 years old a man walked up behind me, called my name and said, You won't remember me, but we are proud of you. We are watching you. Be good now. You are important. I ran inside the barber shop to my mom and told her. She went outside, but there was no one there. Ever since then I felt like I'm being watched, but that I'm destined for something special. Epic troll possibly, but inspiring nonetheless. My husband and I bought an antique clock at a flea market. It wasn't until we went home and looked at it more closely that we realized on the inside of the door on the back it had our wedding date written in pencil. Our anniversary is the 22nd of September 2009. The 22nd of September 2024 was written in the clock. Plot twist. The 22nd of September 2024 is when you divorce. My mum once had a terrible dream that something awful had happened in the town we used to live in. We hadn't lived there for 5 plus years. Just out of curiosity she checked their local newspaper online and in the obituaries section she saw that my best friend from when I lived they had died of cancer a couple of days previous. Not being one for paranormal ghost psychic stuff, this one had me stumped. This didn't happen to me, but it happened to my ex. He was at a singles tennis tournament as a kid and he was reading the roster. According to the sheet, he was playing himself. Turns out, his opponent had the same very uncommon first name, middle initial, and last name. Years passed, and someone shouted his name in a grocery store and he turned around. So did his tennis opponent. When I was 17 my grandpa had a stroke, and was slowly going downhill in the hospital. My grandma figured even if he ever got better, he wouldn't be able to drive so she gave me his truck complete with camper shell and bed carpeting. He was in the hospital for several months. One day for no reason whatsoever I decided to sit in the back of the truck and just think a bit. I was back there for about 45 minutes daydreaming about nothing. When I came inside, my dad told me my grandpa had died 45 minutes ago. 
My friend and I were in the car one night driving to see a movie. I had the most eerie feeling for no reason and it wouldn't go away so I vocalized it to her. I have the creepiest feeling right now. No idea why. She says me too. What the heck. I've been feeling creeped out for the last 10 minutes. A couple minutes later her phone rings. Unknown number. She answers and no one's there so she hangs up. Rings again. Same number. Picks up. Then my phone rings. Different unknown number. I get on the phone. Hello? Hello I hear my own voice saying hello on her cell phone. We realize we're talking to each other and get really freaked out and throw our phones in the back seat. Couple seconds later there's a loud bang on the side of her car door. Like someone threw something at the car. But there were no cars or people around. A pull over. Get out. There's a huge dent in the side of her car. Thoroughly creeped out for the rest of the night. Well, this happened to a friend of my dad's but it is definitely a weird coincidental experience. It all started about 10 years ago when Joe, we'll call him that, my father's friend, was at a local gas station and saw a very unique lighter with a skull on it. He decided to buy it to smoke, etc. A few years later Joe is out in Lake Michigan during the winter snowmobiling and for some reason, he brought his lighter with him. After a long day on the lake he realized his lighter must have fallen out of his pants and knew there was no way to find it out in the ice. The next year Joe was with his family down in Florida eating at a restaurant. As he's eating there, he hears the sound a lighter makes go off, and right then and there knew it was his lighter. The reasons was that this unique lighter had a very defined sound when lit, and Joe using it for so long must have known that lighter was his. Joe sits there and thinks for a bit and hears it again, that's when he got up and decided to look around the restaurant. As he's looking around he sees another family and a man about 30-40 holding the lighter with a skull on it just like Joe's. Obviously, Joe asks him how he got it and the man says he was out walking in the shallow water of Lake Michigan by his cabin and found it somewhat buried in the sand. Creepy. Huh. Yes, Joe did get his lighter back. The man freely gave it up with that big of a coincidence. My first long term boyfriend and I shared quite a few coincidences that we figured out over the 4 years of dating. Our fathers share the same first name, as well as our uncles on our father's side. Our middle siblings, both in families of 3 children, share the same birthday. We both lived in Germany, on the same army base, at the same time and never knew each other, and after moving around the country as children, we both ended up at the same high school. There are even a few more, but over the years I've forgotten some of them. You have been visited by the blanket pig up vote for good night's sleep for the next lunar year. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.